There is nothing that distinguishes us from every other people on planet Earth than the fact that we can know God personally and experience His presence as a people. And I think many of us live outside of that knowledge and need to get desperate again for the experience of it. Welcome to the One Cry Podcast, a nationwide call for spiritual awakening. The goal, accelerating the movement of God through sharing revival truth, stories, and reports. Well, welcome once again to the One Cry Podcast. Uh, I love saying that every week (laughs) because it's just fun for us to... uh, be invited into your life and your home. You may be rolling down the road in a car or sitting out by a stream somewhere or washing the dishes or who knows what. (laughs) We're just glad that you take some time to uh, turn this on. We pray it's a help to you. And I'm Bill Eliff and Kyle Reno's here with me. And uh, we have been talking the last few weeks, Kyle, about prayers that change stuff. I mean, all of us, all of us want to see things change. We desperately need to sing, see things change. And we say, well, how do I, how do I get this done? How does my family mm-hmm. get changed? How do I get changed? I, I'm so tired of doing the same things the same way, the same sins I can't get seem to get over with. How do we see that changed? And we're talking about uh, that, that the instrument that God uses is prayer but there's something behind that even more. Right. right no so, doubt. I mean, it's, it's been a powerful, I mean, just the reality that, that our prayers matter and that God has sovereignly decided to give us a responsibility in prayer that brings about change here on earth is awesome. man. last week, if you missed last week, you need to go back, stop this one and go back and listen to <laughs> last week in Colossians three, because uh, Bill really teed it up the thought of the truth of, uh, heavenly places and that that where Christ is seated and now the position we have and how it changes how we pray and I mean I felt like the we, we walked away real encouraged let me put it that way yeah. uh, of the privilege the privilege of prayer and, and today I want I want to talk about uh praying for his presence and so I, I know Bill that you have experienced the presence of many minions in your home recently you know so. you know uh, I <laughs> Here we go. Kyle and I are taping this right before Christmas, and yeah. you may be listening it to it uh, if you're in real time. It'll it'll come out before Christmas. But uh, the reality is, I have eight kids, and they're all married, and they all have this plethora of children. So when we're all together, there's 44 of us. Uh, in fact, 45. About to be 45. And uh, one of our families is not coming in there with their in-laws this Christmas. But tomorrow, tomorrow, Mm. 40 people will be in my house. Now, you say, well, that's not not so bad. Here's the kicker. For two weeks. No, man. For two weeks. They're coming for two weeks. And we have Mm. some that live here, some that come in. And, uh, and, you know, it's berserk. I'm, I am slap dab worn out from cleaning yeah. and getting ready, but you know what? Here's the deal. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world All right. All right. because I, it's one thing for me to see my grandkids. I have 27 and 20 of them are under 10 years old. It's one thing for me to see them on FaceTime or, you know, have a phone call. It's another thing for me to have just days in their presence and Mm -hmm. and, you know you learn things about them you experience them our hearts are knit together when we're in each other's presence Mm -hmm. and and i think the parallel that uh kyle is you know we we talk about prayer a lot but really for you and me i know Mm -hmm. it's not about prayer Mm -hmm. it's about prayer that that takes us into the presence of god yeah no doubt yeah i think man just the even in the in the era in which we live, with all of our technical capabilities and the the ability to connect on so many different platforms and formats, you know, with all the virtual uh, opportunities, there is there is in, hardwired into humanity a need for personal interaction and for presence. 
for that face to face. And, and that's true for us in our relationships. Like what you're just saying is like it, while the thought of 44 human beings is crazy, you wouldn't trade it for anything in the world because there's something that, that there's something so right about that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think what, what religion robs us of religion makes God very distant. It, it, he makes, he makes God stoic uh, religion. I mean, that spirit makes him uh, someone that's unknowable. And what Jesus did is he destroyed all that. <laughs> sure, he was God mm-hmm. with us. You know, he was Emmanuel. He, and so he, he let us see God in the flesh. But it really points back to, the, to a truth that has been there since Genesis, that, that God desires for us to commune and have, to have relationship and to experience the divine, the presence of God. And I think that there's, there's so many places in the Scripture that show you that, but there's this one place that shows you how desperate they knew it, and, and specifically one leader. So in Exodus 33, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna read a couple passages, and then Bill, I know you've you, you've spent a lot of time in this chapter, and I, it says something that 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 my spirit just goes. That's it. It yeah. says in verse verse one. It says the Lord said to Moses, "Depart, go up from here." This is the Lord to Moses. You got to remember context, contextual here. Thirty two golden calf just happened. They, they, they have been led through Red Sea. God has manifested his power. We got 10 plagues. But they have yet again, idolatry has crept into their heart, and they've, they have literally created for themselves a golden calf to worship. And the Lord's at his breaking point. And I, just, I would just say that God has those moments where he looks down and he says, enough's enough. And, uh, and, and this is one of those moments. I, I think that we... Re- we read 33, the beginning, with a little bit of knowledge of how it ends sometimes. No, read where it is, what it's saying, when it is. And at this moment, the Lord said to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to your offspring. I will give it. And listen to what he says. I will send an angel before you. And I will drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you. Wow. Lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. Verse 4. And when the people heard this disastrous word, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments, for the Lord had said to, to Moses, say to the people of Israel, you're a stiff necked people for if a single moment I should go up with you, I would consume you. So now take off your ornaments that I may know what to do with you. Therefore, the people of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments and from Mount Horeb onward. Then you have the tent of meeting moment. And I'm, I want to land in the intercession. But here's what I want, to, want you to hear. They had been led by the presence of God that was manifested, cloud, fire, plagues, and the Red Sea being split, and all these moments. And then God is saying in the rebellion, that's enough, that if I stay manifest among them, then I, then, then ultimately I, I'm going to have to destroy them. I'm going to have to consume them with my holiness. And so I'm just going to send them on. I th- here, here's what I think, Bill. I'd love for us to talk about this. I think God meant it. I, I think yeah. God meant like I will send an angel to get them to where I promised because I'm a promise keeping God. I'm gonna get them to where I told them I was gonna take them, but I'm not going with them. They're not gonna. It's not that God was not everywhere all the time. He is, but they're not gonna. The known presence of God, the experienced presence of God, was was no, was no longer gonna be among them. And and then and then you have this now. Moses used the the verse seven to take the tent and, and pitch it outside of camp far from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting and everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. And when, whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. And when Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each at his tent door. 
Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And when Moses returned to, into the camp, his assistant Joshua, son of Nun, a young man, would depart from the tent. It's so interesting that it shows us how important God's presence was in this section of Scripture that's not necessarily tied to the context of what just happened. It's saying, like, this is how this interaction, Moses and Lee, he used to set up a tent. He'd go meet with God there, the, the manifest presence of God. The people would look on, and they would know how important God's presence was and giving them instruction to hear their intercession. And the, the future leader of Israel is shaped in the presence of God. Joshua would tarry there at the tent. And, and, what, and what's being said is this, is that God just said that's not going to happen no more. God just said, we're not going to operate that way no more. I'm just going to send you on. And listen, Moses says, uh-uh. With that context, you got to get Moses' intercession right here, verse 12. And Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, I have found favor in your sight. Please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Here's the Lord's response. And he said to him, if your presence, man, I could lose it right here. If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? Hmm. And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing you have spoken I will do for you, for you have found favor in my sight. And I know you by name. <laughs> mm. Mm. So here's where it starts, 33. Here's where we get to. The Lord says, I, I'm done with this people that are stiff-necked, rebellious, all of it. Then it gives us this contextual moment saying, this is how things used to operate, this tent of meeting where, where Moses met with God face-to-face. -face. Joshua tarried. The people watched on. But that day's done. God just said that's over with. And Moses gets desperate mm -hmm. and he makes one man's intercession one's man's intercession it god hears and allows a whole nation to continue to experience his presence continue like mm -hmm. that's a wild wild thought i say all that saying bill let's just talk about i think moses knew uh, what we need to be reminded of that there is nothing that distinguishes us from every other people on planet Earth than the fact that we can know God personally and experience His presence as a people. And I think many of us live outside of that knowledge and need to get desperate again for the experience of it. Well, you know, if we're content to live without the conscious awareness of God's presence, the Lord will let us live there. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you think uh, most of the world now just just to be clear about this with people as we're listening here we know there's the omnipresence of God sure. he's present everywhere all the time we right. get that but but how do you explain people who live their lives without one thought of God ever yeah. without ever one response to him they're on their own right? Mm -hmm. They're lost, the Bible says, mm -hmm. and and they're separated from God. That's mm -hmm. one condition of being without the presence of God. But here's another condition, and that's people who've at some point in their life, they've recognized their need for Christ. They've cried mm -hmm. out. The Lord has saved them. Mm -hmm. His spirit has come to dwell within them, mm -hmm. but they don't learn how to walk with Jesus and to live with a conscious awareness of his presence. Yeah. So they act just like a guy that, that doesn't even know God's around. They don't, they don't pray. They don't commune. They don't talk with the Lord. They're not listening to him through the word of God. Yeah. And you go day by day, and there's no distinction. 
mm-hmm. between them. Same sin, same problems, same worries, mm-hmm. all of that. The mark of a great Christian life yeah. is a man or woman who's learned how to live in the in the fullness of God's presence. Right. And 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 uh, Kyle, one of our buddies, Jordan Bowen, who has spoken here on our podcast at times, asked him one yeah. time. I said, Jordan, how did it all start for you about about experiencing the presence of God? He said one word: desperation. Yeah. I, I just I got to where I was yeah. I was sick and tired of living my life by myself and I had to have yeah. the Lord's presence. I didn't know how. Yeah. And he said, I just began crying out and pursuing and yeah. some people helped me along the way. And now I'm beginning to learn how to live in this mm-hmm. and with this every day. And his life is showing the distinct. And you get around Jordan, mm-hmm. you the smell of the fragrance of Christ is there. Amen. Because the presence of God is there. Yeah. I think, man, that's awesome. I think the reality of, and I think <clears throat> theologically we wrestle around this son. The experience of his presence, but uh, find find me in the scripture where people were not abiding in relationship with God in such a way that it was evidence, like those that God greatly used. That there was there was more to them than them. There was yeah. there was more to them than merely a man or a woman. That they had they had been shaped and fashioned. Why does God pick Joshua? Why does Moses know we're done if God's manifest presence among his leadership, if, it, if he's not going to give us direction, if he's not going to speak to us, if he's not going to protect us, that there's something about God's presence that's tangible, that's, that's, yeah. that, 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 is, that is known and experienced, that's distinguishable, that it distinguishes us. And I, I, I think that, man, to have that desire, that, the, that the, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is experienced in the presence of God in, in a way that I know for me at 19 mm-hmm. years old, I had heard the information of the gospel many times. I've heard it. And, and that, listen, it's, it is the, the power of the gospel that saves. But I walked into an environment where the presence of God was inescapable and heard mm-hmm. the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I was done. Mm-hmm. I was done. I was, yeah. I was. I, I was born I, again. I was made alive in an environment like that. And and the truth is, and now I'm learning how to the rest of my life, how to walk in his presence, how, how so, to be a, consciously aware of that. So, Kyle, talk to us about. So here's somebody listening and says, man, I, I know there's something missing. Mm hmm. And and I'm I'm just I feel like I'm living on my own very humanistically, right. Right. and I don't see the fruit and the power, and I really want to change. We're talking about prayers that yeah. change, yeah. change stuff. Yeah. How do we go from there mm-hmm. to being a person who, uh, you know, in in Moses' term, Moses, God said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you on, and. And you'll have some blessing, but you're not going to have my presence. Yeah, right. And Moses said, well, that's not enough. So how do we mm-hmm. become yeah. that guy that has the presence yeah. of God and moves and walks with it? And, yeah. and the fragrance is at, what and what part does yeah. prayer play in that? Yeah, yeah. there's no sh- there's, there's no shortcuts. I think that you look at even in, the, in chapter 33, positioning matters. He could have just pressed on. You yeah. know, Moses could say, "Well, that's what he said. I'll just go on." You know, instead he goes, "No, no, I, I need you. I'm desperate for you." That positioning plays a part in experiencing mm-hmm. God's presence. You know, I, I, I talked to a young man last night that came back home from college, and he walked into one of our gatherings. And I think there's something to be said about as a gathered people experiencing God's presence. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came up to me broken. I mean, just broken. He, he'd been off to college doing the college thing, and he walks into the presence of the Lord and is reminded of the truths of the gospel of Jesus. And he comes up to me, and then what he's basically saying is, I just miss him. I miss him. I miss wow. him. And, that, uh, and, and, and he's wanting to find his way back into his presence. 
He's he yeah. is. He knows. He knows that he's believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, but he's not walking with him. Like in, yeah. and he, and I said to him, I said, "Man, give this Christmas break to crawl back into His presence, just yeah. to crawl back in His. He wants you, you know. Like uh, yeah. open the Word again, open the Scriptures again, and let God breathe on you. This is God's breath, you know. Spend yeah. time. Like don't run. No, if you think where you, I mean, here's a fact." It is true of anything in our lives. If you sh- if you if you sit under the influence of anyone over time, it will transform you. Yeah, it will it will change you. And so to not to not be a people that sits in His presence is a weird thing, honestly. Like Moses yeah. and them knew how to tarry in the presence of God. And you know, that, and and it and it as I hear you talk, Kyle. It, there, it seems like there's there's kind of three things here there's there's a uh, i don't know what the word is a spiritual uh attitude Hmm. attitudes that lead into his presence yeah like humility Hmm. you know you're not you you have to come to the place where you are so desperate and the proud man then will never experience because he doesn't care he doesn't need it he thinks right. he's got it. So there's this, this humility that leads to this brokenness mm. and then the willingness to repent and get honest. Mm. There's a transparency that has to come for us to begin. So all these, all these spiritual uh, 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 attitudes, is, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a word here, but mm-hmm. secondly, there are some places Mm-hmm. That we put ourselves around God's people, yeah, around godly men, right? You know, and then and then thirdly, there's some means that God has given us. That the whole point is these means: the Word of God, mm-hmm. prayer, the people of God, fasting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All these things are are uh, God's ordained means. Mm-hmm. To help us enter into and live in the presence of God, yeah, right. and all those things, it's not like a just one, two, three formula. Mm-hmm. It's just this whole a desperate man, mm-hmm. and you hear it in, in Moses. God, no, 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 we can't. I mm-hmm. cannot go up, and mm-hmm. then it's just the favor of God. Yeah, that God says, "Okay, buddy, I hear your heart." Yeah. And I, and I just see you turning. I'll go with you. Yeah. And and yep. then and and he's and he's praying. I mean, this we're talking about prayer that change changes stuff. Mm-hmm. He's this whole what he's doing right here is praying, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. he's praying based on the truth of God, the word of God. So it's yeah. word based prayer. So he's using these means, but right. it's it's the heart, mm-hmm. and God sees that heart and blesses us with mm-hmm. the favor of His presence. Yeah, I think to wrap us up here, you know, and to move us to actually practicing what we're we're seeing in the scripture is to make intercession for your life personally, for your church, uh, for your area to experience the presence of God, to to know to know the distinction of God's presence. Here's the truth: if you just back up in thirty two, what what did they do that that broke the heart of God? They worshipped a golden calf. Yeah, like they they set up a physical structure presence, and they adored it. They brought offerings to it. Like they mm-hmm. they worshipped it. They 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 brought something they could see, touch. They set environments that they could smell. All those things. Here's the facts. You don't know a person that's not a worshiper. You don't know that's a person. Right. You don't know there. There's never been one. That's not that's not positioning themselves in something's presence or mm-hmm. someone's presence that they're in pursuit of. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. But but for us, man, that should be so like whose presence are we longing for most? Is it the attention of people? No, man, it's the Lord. <laughs> Who are we desperate to to experience? And are we trying to position ourselves for the best things on planet earth or for the best church we can possibly have in our own strength and power. No, man, we, we're people that avail ourselves to God. Yeah. Like a God. I remember the first time I heard somebody say, 
that we that we arrange our entire services or worship gatherings is in one expression with one ultimate goal is to attract the presence of God. That's right. That's right. And you know, Kyle, I'm just thinking before we pray here and that, uh, this is one man. Mm -hmm. This is one man at one moment in history. Right. And let's just think, had he not prayed like this, what would have happened? Hmm. You know, what would have happened? I mean, you, I, I don't know, but I mean, right. you, just, you just go on. God w certainly wouldn't have used him uh, and he would have missed it. But here one man prayed and his prayer changed something. Man, it brought right. the presence of God to God's people. So let's get real practical. If you're listening today and you say, man, our church is just not, we're not experiencing the presence of God. We worship a lot of different idols. There's immorality and, and materialism and this and that and the other. And, you know, we have church and we do services and stuff. But the presence of God is not distinctively there. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Who's going to pray for that? Yeah. Are, are you going to sit around and just say, well, I wish something would change. Are, are you going to be the watchman on the walls? Are you going to be the Moses mm -hmm. who says, Lord, if you do not go up with us, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. And you are willing to pay the price in prevailing prayer for the presence of God to come to your family, mm -hmm. for the presence of God to come to your church, for the presence of God to be manifested in your city. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of prayer that changes stuff. Mm. And Kyle, would you just would yeah. you just pray for us right now mm. that God would raise up all mm. of us mm. uh, to be men and women like this that, that pray yeah. like Moses prayed? Yeah, yeah. Let's enter into His presence together. No matter where you are, um, just let your heart cry out to Him. Lord, I am asking in the strong name of Jesus, that you would awaken a people again that realize that there's nothing that distinguishes us like your presence. That's right. That there's nothing that makes us distinct in this broken world like the fact that we are loved by God, that we are cared for, and that we have been rescued by a king. And so, Lord, I, I am asking, uh, Lord, I, I pray that when we sense the distance, maybe in our lives individually or in our church or in our city, when we sense that, Lord, you're not near, that you're not being known in that area or environment or our own life. God, I, I'm praying right now that you'd awaken a desperate plea yes. and a cry and your people saying, Lord, please let us let us know you and the power of your resurrection in the midst of this hard world. Would you help us to be marked by you, a people of hope, God, a people of power because you are moving in our midst and through our lives, Lord. So, Lord, we just echo with Moses. Lord, if you're not going with us into wherever we're going, we don't want to move from right here. That's right. But, Lord, what all that lies ahead, we're asking, Lord, would you let us follow you? You let us follow you into the future, knowing ultimately we're heading toward home where we're mm -hmm. going to know you fully forever, Lord. So let us mm -hmm. know your presence to the fullest measure possible mm -hmm. here on earth. So, Lord, I mm -hmm. pray you bless our listeners with a desperate heart cry for that in this next season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Kyle, for taking us into Moses' world. And uh, and I pray the Lord will just keep, keep making us men and women who pray in ways that change the world. And we're going to look at it again next week. I hope you won't miss a single episode of our One Cry podcast. We're so thrilled that you joined us. And and, and I would just say, uh, as we close, would you just ask the Lord, Lord, make me a man like Moses that's willing to pray and not faint for the presence of God to come in power. Mm. So, Lord, do that in us and do it again. We're 
about to have a series on our podcast of asking the Lord to do again what He's done in the past of sending revival and awakening to our nation. And we hope you'll stay tuned every week. Don't miss an episode. We'll see you next time.